Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome again to this new uh, Academy uh, of Yena Surgical event. Uh, today, we will uh, more than glad to, to guest the Dr. Piche, who is one of our uh, KOL, and it's one of the most experienced urologists with, uh, that is working with, uh, with our system. Uh, with us to today, uh, there's also uh, Mr. Rotman, our uh, sales manager, uh, who I leave right now uh, the line, the monitor, and the voice uh, to introduce himself and to, do, to introduce all of you in, uh, into this webinar. Welcome again, and uh, I hope that uh, you will join uh, very fruitful this meeting. Uh, to the session, we started with Dr. Pichet to present our system and the device since a couple of years together. Uh, my job was to present a little bit the basics, the laser basics. This is what I will do today as well. And afterwards, after about 15 minutes, Dr. Pichet will perform or will show his presentation with our device. Um, the whole lecture, has three parts. So I will start with basics, then Dr. Fischer will, uh, will show his part afterwards. After about 35 minutes, um, there is another option where we can show you uh, dedicated or we will ask, we will answer questions regarding our device. Post your question and then uh, we can reply to you. So. I will start now to show you in a very short time uh, different specs, laser specs, uh, characteristics. And this means we are talking about continuous wave, we are talking about pulsing, and according pulsing laser, like the Holmium, um, I will explain you a little bit something thermal relaxation time and how coagulation can or occurs. So I will start with my first slide. Just a question. Are you Pietro? Can you see my my computer? Yes, everything is fine. You okay. can go ahead. Okay, so we start. So um, first of all, I have two slides. Um, telling you from where we are coming, what we are doing. So the company is located in Jena, and um, other optical companies are also in this part, in this area of uh, Germany. As you can see, there are a couple of optical uh, companies like size. And our history, the company of our history, uh, has a couple of years, as you can see, uh, when the laser starts, the medical laser uh, were developed and starts in the 60s. And now I would point out just two years. So one, when Asclepion laser technology was founded. The next step is Yena Surgical, 14. And uh, two years ago, Yena Surgical becomes a brand of Asclepion laser technology. So both names are right. If you hear uh, or you get some information from Asclepion laser technology, we are talking about the manufacturer. And Asclepion is <clears throat> manufacturing um, lasers for aesthetics and for surgical. The aesthetic laser are sold under the brand of Asclepion and the surgical laser are sold under the brand of Jena Surgical. Now, moving forward to the laser physics, just one slide about laser physics. What are the characteristics? You can see here on the left side, a monochromatic light, like the daylight, and you see there are a lot of wavelengths. Characteristic for a laser, is that you have just one wavelength. The laser beam is parallel and in phase. These are the three characteristics of the laser. 
And you can see here on this part, for instance, uh, the, the different color in the visible range. And as you can see, the intensity is like a Gauss uh, curve. And the laser is just in a very narrow part uh, of this nanometer XX. And you can see a very high P. This is the laser. Now, important from the laser and uh, the absorption, I present here the target. Basically, the human tissue consists of water. And the absorption curve of water is shown here in this picture, where we have the wavelength on the x-axis. And on the other side, we have the absorption. So you can see for the laser, we are offering for the surgical field um, where the target is basically water. Uh, you see the absorption of the holmium. In this part, the tulium is higher, has a higher absorption. And our fiber laser, tulium fiber laser, is by the way on the top at 1940 here. The 1470 is the second part of the tulium laser. Um, uh, a Raman module 1470 and is basically um, introduced for coagulation, for a better coagulation. Now, uh, we spoke about uh, these two wavelengths in the rheologic. You can see the tulium, the absorption, and the coagulation depths from the tulium and the holmium. You can see here uh, accordingly the green laser diode or NDX, how deep the penetration in the tissue is. So this is a picture where I just try to show you a continuous wave, like a tulium EF laser, and here showing the holmium laser as a bubble of pulse. And you can also recognize here the coagulation depths, showing the coagulation depths. Now, if you remember the absorption curve, the holmium and the tulium is a little bit different, but the coagulation demanded for the surgery to stop bleeding is very important. And the, uh, the continuous wave laser has a different impact in the tissue compared now to a pulse laser. <clears throat> now, uh, moving forward, how a laser uh, is manufactured. You have a flash and you have a laser medium. Basically, the volume is a solid state laser with two mirrors. And the pulse laser, because we have a pulsing mode, uh, you have here the, the, the mathematical, uh, the pulsing or repetition rate generates the power. And you can see here some typical or some suggested settings for stone treatment, dusting, and the BPH. So we adjust a dedicated energy with a repetition rate. And the result is somewhat. So, how is the pulse gaining, or how is a pulse produced? So, you have, as shown before, the pumping source and a medium. Now, according to this pumping source, you generate pulses in milliseconds, in microseconds, or even in nanoseconds for a QCH laser, basically for tattoo removal or in ophthalmic. Important is to understand for the thresholds we need or to get an impact and uh, to have a good treatment, um, you must know the body temperature already known. We have to generate a temperature or to, to approach a 60 degree to get a coagulation in the tissue. And as you know, 100 degree is the boiling uh, temperature of the tissue of water. And so this is also a threshold we have to approach uh, to remove or to disrupt. 
So here, a different slide where you see the laser is absorbed. Um, firstly, no impact with 100 degrees, a little bit more and decreasing the time more and more, um, you generate here some scars or scars can be generated. How to avoid this um, is the thermal relaxation time. Now from the fist below, if we like to get one milliliter water to vaporize, we need about 2.4 joules. So um, the thermal relaxation time, and I try to explain it uh, here in this picture, as you can see, if you have um, um, something hot here and you touch it with your finger, just short, short period, you have no thermal effect because you are below the thermal relaxation time. If you stay longer on this uh, uh, hot part, you get an injury and you, or if you exceed, you have this, this burning. So for vessels, to get back again for coagulating the prostate, for instance, we have here the thermal relaxation time is determined like this, and you can see here the diameter of the vessels, for instance, uh, we are talking here about the different uh, thermal relaxation time, and this must be seen if we want to, uh, to get the, this tissue good coagulated. Now, how to do that? How can we do that? We can prolong, so staying long on the tissue, you increase as well, as mentioned before, the injury, burning, and uh, doing damage, damaging the, the tissue. So with the pulsed laser, we get this temperature. You remember 60 degree and 100 degree is for water target, where we have mainly water. If we use the pulse laser, in this case, not a thorium, the, the hobium laser, you have a thermal effect. Dr. Pischer will talk afterwards much more about to show you the thermal effect and the, the mechanical effect. So you have all the time some heating, some heat is applied to the tissue, and then it goes down. To increase the heat or to get this coagulation done, what can we do? We increase the repetition rate and to accumulate, to get accumulation of the heat of the temperature. And if we have here in this region, at this energy level, the coagulation, we can do this uh, when we increase the repetition rate. Another approach for getting a better coagulation is to increase the pulse width. And the pulse width on our device um, is more than 1.6, 1.7 milliseconds. So the, the area between these three pulses is the same. So um, you can see if we use a short pulse, um, a medium pulse or a long pulse, the mechanical effect and the thermal effect um, can be increased, or in this case, when we are talking about coagulation, we can increase the better coagulation when we use a longer pulse. So this was for the part of the technique. What we have as well with the laser, we the a fiber to bring the generated energy in this laser to the distal end with the fiber on the tissue to get this coagulation or disruption um, um, in the surgery. And just one slide about the fiber. We have the fiber consists of these three parts. We have the core, basically quartz. We have the cladding and a coating. Uh, why do we need this V? And you can see here, um, we need a proper 
fiber with these materials to have the reflection, a proper reflection, uh, to get adjusted, let's say, 100 watt, uh, as well on the distal end. Why I would like to point out this, uh, this topic is when you use fiber um, in the flexible, uh, you perform URS, and if you bend the fiber, if you stretch, you have here some energy that's take this part here on the red arrow. And um, it is recommended after some time to cut the fiber because the fiber gets stressed here and uh, the energy by entering in the fiber on the SMA and the distal end um, uh, is not the same. So to have the, a good uh, efficiency, it is good to change or to use dedicated fibers. So another slide, important slide you uh, should understand is the fluence and how the fiber combined with the dedicated energy or power uh, is working with the human tissue. Now we are talking here about human tissue with the water and the effect that occurs on the tissue using the fiber, let's say um, more than a half, uh, five millimeter, and this is a medium distance in between and a quasi contact. So as you can see uh, here, there is no effect and decreasing coming from downstairs or uh, increasing, uh, sorry, decreasing coming from upstairs or increasing the distance from the tissue, the fluence is changing compared to here. And in this case, we have, we are talking about this 100 degree uh, where we can vaporize, cut or ablate. And when we like to coagulate, if we decrease the distance, decrease the distance here, from the fiber, you have the coagulation. And if you are too far away with the fiber, there is no effect. So, yes, thank you. This is um, my first part. I have as well some slides related to our devices and laser safety and um, lasers in urology. But uh, I won't pass through this slide just after the presentation. Uh, of Dr. Pizer and if Divandi. Thank you. And if you have questions, please ask either um, on uh, after the, the presentation here, or you can call me or us afterwards. Thanks a lot. I'd like to um, to do the presentation now. Okay, so. I'd like to talk about uh, especially holmium laser enucleation uh, this evening and about a special laser setting, the EPS. Um, as you all know, endoscopic enucleation of the prostate is the new gold standard, at least for um, bigger glands. Uh, Thomas Herman already 2016 uh, was comparing all those and uh, whole lab, bipolar, thulium, and he found that they are equally safe um, and all effective. Moreover, in 2019, the Hamburg group showed a prospective randomized study and they could show that they are also about equal concerning median operation time. If you look at the EAU guidelines, enucleation is the first choice, at least for bigger glands. And nowadays, for sure, you don't want to cut the patient open. You want to do it transurethrally, means bipolar, whole lab, or thulium. However, if you have a big holmium laser, 
you're good for any other option too. So why holmium laser? Why hole it? The holmium laser is the only source of energy that does not only provide thermal energy, but it has a mechanical effect. And uh, Mr. Rotman told you that already. The holmium laser pulse explosively creeps into the gap between the capsule and the adenoma, and it spreads it like a dissecting scissors or an exploding airbag. So you can also call it an active airbag technique if you do hold it. Well, everybody wants to tell us, just use our laser, higher power laser, best laser in the world. Just press the hold it button and you do it. Um, there's a nice work from Mansura from 2018, and they compared low power, means two joule, 25 hertz, means 50 watt, with high power, two joule, 50 hertz, means 100 watt. And they found no difference concerning speed and functional results. However, already 2014, we were awarded for this work and we were looking at laser settings, especially the mechanical effect of a holmium laser. And as you see, this mechanical, this blow effect, this active airbag effect becomes bigger, the bigger the pulse energy is. And we also found out that it's only dependent on pulse energy. And these are our results. If you look here, this is the thermal effect and it reaches maximum about five millimeter from the tip of the laser fiber. In contrast to that, the mechanical effect reaches about eight to 10 times farther. So it can make a distance of the tissue to the tip of the laser fiber using that mechanical effect. At the right side, you see that a continuous wave, thulium laser, it has no mechanical effect at all. And the bigger the pulse energy, the bigger this active airbag effect is. And it's, again, totally independent. And that's what we found out from pulse energy. And what we do is using the highest pulse energy possible in our laser setting. And we call it EPS, enhanced pulse setting. So the definition of EPS is use the highest pulse energy possible at a specific frequency. So you choose a frequency you're convenient with to operate, and then you switch on the highest pulse energy possible for your laser. Means, uh, for example, for an 80 watt laser, you can use like 22 hertz and can even use three and a half joule or you do three joule and turn up the frequency a bit, but frequency is not crucial for inner cleavage.
Okay, so um, if you if you look at our data and we compared our data with a big meta-analysis done by uh, Sasha Achiai, uh, published in the European Journal 2010, and if you wonder if you compare EEP methods, uh, if the tangerine is empty, the tangerine is empty, so all this functional data should be the same, more or less. This data um, of Sasha Achiai were interesting also because they compared whole app operation speed with TRP operation speed, and they found that the speed is about the same, which is 0 0.5 gram per minute. If you compare this, those old data with the new data from Hamburg Bahn Bank from this year uh, or last year, you see that EEP can be very fast is it, if it's performed in a high volume center with very good surgeons like uh, Professor Gross or Christopher Nitsch. However, uh, this is our data. And this, is, this is not uh, because we are great surgeons. I think this is only because we use the mechanical aid of the active airbag of the EPS. Also, if we compare it with the Mansura data, uh, looking at the enucleation speed solemnly, um, it's about 70% faster. So the whole of EPS provides a better view, and I would really have liked you to show it on the video that was uh, probably not possible. Um, there's an easier dissection, and it's a faster operation, as you saw here. The chances are that it's easier for beginners. Uh, there's less thermal injury because you have a big mechanical airbag protecting from the thermal energy, probably less urgency afterwards, which is hard to prove actually in the study. And you have a definitely reduction of shearing forces because all the EEP surgeons, they would shovel with the shaft for me mechanical dissection. This is something you don't need to do with the EPS. I use only three fingers to guide my instrument to reduce the shearing forces because if you shovel the shaft, the angle you use is the sphincter area and you don't want to hurt that. Let's switch to more salation. We were um, happy to be co-developer for this uh, very nice tool with Ina Surgical. And uh, we tested this prospectively, uh, compared it with a reference, which is the Piranha at the moment. At the moment, it's not a standalone tool. It's built, uh, combined with a big holmium laser. There's a roller pump, there's a good stable handpiece, and there's a direct outflow, which makes it different, for example, to the Piranha, which is indirect and needs a sampling, basin sampling uh, container. Uh, there's a control panel and the foot pedal that are combined with the laser. You can use it at once, um, which is a big advantage. You don't need two tools in the OR. If you compare the blades at the upper right, it's the Yina Surgical, and at the lower, is the Wolf Piranha. The Piranha, it's a single-use blade, a disposable blade. Um, if you compare the Yena, which is multiple use, it's an inside out design. At the outer, there are the teeth holding the tissue, and the inside is the clear cut. We compared that in that study, and the morselation weight was about the same. But if you look at morselation time and speed, uh, we are about 30% faster with the multi cut. Also, less irrigation throughput means that the bladder will stay filled, will not collapse, which is a big safety feature. And if you ever do more sillation, you know the beach ball phenomenon, the tissue popping away from the tip of your more sillation blade, and which is really tiring sometimes. And this is completely absent with a multi-cut due to the fact that the suction is better and the teeth hold the tissue tighter and you don't lose the pieces anymore. In our study, both 
uh, mercilators do obstruct sometimes. The piranha, some are often, and if it obstructs, the wolf needs a second handpiece in the OR sterile because it always obstructs in the handpiece. For the multi-cut, it's, it's uh, multiple use blades, so and they only they only uh, obstruct in the blade. So if you need a new blade, you get just the second one. Your nurse is cleaning the other, and you continue the operation, which is pretty simple. What about bladder stones? The holmium laser is the only source of energy for EEP that can also deal very perfectly with stones. You will see that big bladder stone, which is about three centimeters, and it took me about 10 to 12 minutes to get rid of those. Um, so just do the stones before the whole app at some, some uh, time and uh, our Des disintegration time for bladder stones. You can add about 1.5 gram per minute for the stone before the whole lab, and then the stone is gone. You don't need to cut the patient open. And this is an advantage you only have with a high power home in laser. So to conclude, um, EEP is perfectly the gold standard, at least for bigger glands. And if you look at the guidelines, bigger glands are more than 80. I would even say it's more than 50. You, it's good for enucleation. Um, for sure, you can do it also with smaller glands, but I think the difference to the TERP is not so big then. However, if you do EEP, Holeb is the best method to do enucleation. And if you do Holeb, do it with the EPS setting because it's most efficient. Uh, it's reducing shearing forces and it has the shortest learning curve. We did, this is something I should mention, we did a, um, a comparison to the literature data which says 25 to 50 cases for whole apps to learn, uh, which would be about the same for TERP anyway. But for the EPS setting, our um, our trainees in two centers uh, in the Netherlands and also in Germany 
they have an average learning curve of 10 cases before they can do it completely on their own. And this is due to the consequent use of the active Arabic technique. This is anyway imminent to any whole lab, but if you do the EPS setting, it's just best. If you have more isolation with a multi-cut, it's faster, easier, and also safer than with the piranha, we were able to prove that. And if you have stones, for sure, it's no deal for a Holman laser. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Pichet. And thank you very much for uh, this wonderful presentation. Um, I just collect uh, a few questions uh, for you. So, uh, as you know already, um, there, there are two questions coming out each time when we uh, are in the war, when we perform, where we are doing our workshops. First of all, how are you dealing or give please a little bit of feedback about the coagulation with high energy first? Because uh, a lot of users, they fear using a higher energy compared now to other proctor, uh, the bleeding will increase and the correlation will be less. This would be the first. And the second also um, coming up is how are you dealing with patients um, with anticoagulation? What can you, what, uh, what okay. kind um, of... Uh, haben Sie verstanden? Hello? Yeah? Hello, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, well, the second question with co anticoagulants, it's very simple. For whole lip, um, we only do whole lips for people um, with uh, under aspirin we do that uh, but for noax and for coumarins we stopped them before so we uh, for for coumarins they are bridged with heparin and uh, for the noax you have to stop them at least three days before okay, okay. fine uh, there's another uh, question that are coming from uh, uh, Dr. Alkan, is uh, what kind of technique you, are you using normally? Uh, he mentioned uh, the handlock technique or the normal three lobes uh, technique. Uh, for, for for me, and um, if you if you talk to to a lot of um, a lot of experienced whole lab surgeons like Karin Leary or uh, Amy Cranbeck or Christopher Nedge, um they they all they all uh, went away from one lobe techniques again. Uh, nobody of, of us is using one lobe technique really. It's not a real advantage. You're making your life uh, bad. So I use three lobe. If there's three lobes, I use two lobes. If there's no median lobe, it's simpler. And what I also do, and I uh, uh, I can show that if if somebody's coming to um, to our seminars. What I always do is also do in an anti-grad fashion. Um, so it's very classical. It's five o'clock and seven o'clock incision doing the median lobe if it's there, doing a 12 o'clock incision for about half of the distance or two thirds of the distance from the bladder neck towards the apex. Um, and then I do also a peeling down technique from 12 to 3 o'clock and 12 to 9 o'clock at, um, at the bladder neck. Um, and then only I start the retrograde enucleation, but it makes it much faster because I meet my incision. Uh, so if you have a good preparation with all that cuts before, then uh, it's a fast enucleation. And I don't have a problem um, cutting it away from the bladder neck like for example amy cranbeck i was asking her how does she teach it to her residents and i and she said well i teach them just to cut through the white curtain i would not recommend a resident to cut through a white curtain and he does not know where he cuts uh just stay at the capsule and near the bladder neck 
the capsule is not always evident anymore. So what I do is doing an anti-grad fashion uh, from 12 to 3 o'clock, for example, for, for the left lobe. This is what I do. So I do three or two lobe technique. Uh, thank you. And uh, one more question that coming from uh, Dr. Riviere uh, is if you can uh, share uh, once more the the, the EPS uh, settings. Uh, yeah. What, what you are normally using. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, my setting at the moment, because I use uh, the the biggest laser machine from, from Jena at the moment, uh, which is which was really really made for um really made for this whole lab eps uh, so i was telling the theory to the you know um, engineers that time and and they really understood the principle um and they made this machine for that setting i used for a four dual pulse um using 35 hertz which is pretty convenient but i started actually um, with a machine with 80 watt before, uh, an old Lisa laser, and I had a 3.6 joule setting with only 22 hertz, and it worked out well. So always use the highest pulse energy possible to make maximum use of that active airbag effect. And uh, just to get the other question before, no, it's not more dangerous, it's less dangerous. You have a bigger overview, you can go away from the tissue with your optics and with the tip of your laser fiber. It's only a few millimeters, but you get more space and you know how much space is five millimeters more or less inside this uh, inside uh, the operation uh, field. If you, if you have this big magnification, uh, with your optics and five millimeters is about half of the diameter of your optics. So if you can get this bigger distance, you have a bigger overview and you have a nicer space to operate on. Uh, the bigger your pulse, the bigger the space you have and the nicer the dissection you generate between the capsule and the adenoma. And it's a real, airbag means safety distance from the thermal effect of your laser fiber. So the closer you come with the laser fiber, the closer you come to the tissue, the more burn you have. Um, this active airbag, this mechanical effect actually is not strong enough. Uh, if, if you have the distance, it's not strong enough to destroy your capsule. No, it creeps inside the gap and spreads the adenoma from the capsule. And it's a really pity that I couldn't show the video because there you see it very nicely how the wow. tissue spreads from the capsule, uh, between the capsule and the adenoma. It was the drawing I showed you. Um, it really creeps inside that gap. It's not uh, destroying or hurting the capsule, it's just vice versa. And concerning the coagulation, uh, coagulation for a whole lab, you never need to change settings. It's only a matter of distance between the laser fiber and the tissue. And, you, and if you approach a tissue from far and come closer slowly, you will see that there is a mild bleaching. The closer you come, the better the bleaching is. And uh, there's not yet any harm to, to the tissue concerning mechanical effect or cutting. Okay, thank you. And uh, let me have a look in the, in the other question that are coming from the, from the audience. Uh, there is another question that it's related to the, to the um, vision during uh, uh, OLEPS, okay, and especially when uh, the, the, the user are using uh, high power settings. And the question is that how you deal with it and if, uh, in your opinion, it should be uh, a problem of the um, 
irrigation fluid height. I mean, how much is height uh, the irrigation fluid? Mm, for for my, I think irrigation um, is oh, uh, one point uh, for sure is the instrument you use. Uh, I don't have so much experience with uh, Wolf or Storz. I use Olympus. Um, however, in in Holland, I also use uh, a storage system. I think it's it's not so much crucial. Um, I don't mind so much the height of um, of the irrigation, but my my personal irrigation is pretty high. It's about uh, one and a half meter or, or or even two meter high. Um, so there is, um, but there's an outflow. I mean, it's continuous irrigation shafts. But you have to be aware the bladder is always full. But uh, the the bigger problem for the irrigation is not during enucleation because you have an outflow. Uh, it's more if you have morselation because during morselation uh, the bladder is really tense full and it has to be tense full. And if you have like perforations in the capsule there can be some extravasation and uh, a fluid overload, either due to penetration even in the abdomen um, or also intravascular if you, if you open vessels. Um, that, that is all possible. Anyway, it's saline, so, so you don't have a real terse, terse syndrome, uh, but you can have a fluid overload and you have to talk to your anesthesiologist to give, uh, for example, furosemide sometimes, um, or look at the patient closely, because if you have a very big fluid overload, he can even uh, develop fluid lungs. Um, I don't experience that in a regular base, but it can happen, and you have to be aware, especially as a beginner, that it can happen. But this has nothing to do with laser setting. This is uh, for every um, EEP technique like thulium or, or bipolar or any holmium, holmium setting, then this is something to do um, with your technique and uh, with the operation time. The longer the operation time, the more fluid intake it, there might be for the patient. Uh, okay, mm, there was another question and in this case it's related to the morselator in the meantime the dr halkan uh, uh, thanks to you for the previous uh, answer on uh, his questions um the 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 question is related to the morselator okay uh, what kind of parameters you are normally uh, using uh, during the morselation um I think it's 200, uh, 2,000 rapids per minute, uh, and uh, I th and and four hertz. Uh, but I'm not uh, really and, sure. Yeah. And, and for sure, you are using the high vacuum, uh, the aspiration. Yeah, yeah, full, a yeah, full aspiration. Full, uh, anyway, uh, we were talking uh, to the engineer, so so there is no. It does not make sense to change any um, any vacuum setting. You always use the full vacuum. Okay, that's right. Uh, let me have a look if we have some other question. Uh, someone asked to to have your uh, webcam on because they cannot uh, have a look on you. But uh, okay, I, I will switch on my webcam. That's not a problem. <laughs> Okay. Will, hello, here I am. <laughs> yes. No, you are online. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, there's no other question uh, from uh, the attendees, and uh, we got a lot of a lot of congratulations and thanks for uh, your a uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Fritz, up to you. Yes, um, I guess all is said so far for my basics. And I have some slides, and I guess could be done afterwards if some people uh, need.
this information yet or not. Uh, uh, yet I don't guess someone's interest on laser safety now after this presentation, a practical one, and uh, to talk about theoretical issues. Um, it's now look, it's 7 p.m. It's one hour. Uh, I'm happy that it worked somehow properly. Unfortunately, you know, but we will send or we show it afterwards. Uh, I would like to thank to all and um, a nice evening. And I would enjoy to welcome you in hope for further workshop we already plan for the rest of the year. So uh, if you like to see this procedure live, you are welcome to come to Germany. We invite you to go. And I guess that the picture will, will come you as well. So have a nice evening from our side and stay safe. Thank you, everybody, again. And thank you again, Dr. Fischer. It was really, really uh, a wonderful presentation and a very nice webinar. Very interesting with a lot, a lot of uh, uh, hints and topics that we can uh, follow in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, and see you soon in uh, one Thank of you our. Thank so much. Be... Okay. In one of our next webinar. Thanks again, Dr. Pisha. Thank you very much. Bye. Have, hope to see you in Hope. Bye bye. Bye bye.